won't set me And you Haunted me All my life And you're the mistress I can make my wife And you've haunted me All my life Haunted me all my life, and you've haunted me all my life. You're the mistress I can make a wife, and you've haunted. I'm Guy Fieri, and I love that show, Colorado, culture and cuisine. We're about to get you entered into Flavortown, and you guys are going to get crunked the fuck up. So listen and enjoy. I'm from fucking outer space, and I'm about to go into my time machine. So you guys have an awesome time, and listen to the fucking podcast. Oh yeah, and by the way, that guy Brad Blair is fucking awesome. So sweet. Now you're about to get in here. Flavortown. Bill, what? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. You're listening to the Colorado Culture and Cuisine Podcast. Holy fucking shit. I'm eating the best pie I have ever had in my entire life. So... We don't really have, you know, the most badass, you know, arm that you can just, like, you know, chomp down on, like, apples and stuff. You find the people that are making, like, legit pie, right? So, I found this pie company at Edwards Meat Market. I don't know what city they're in. Let's look this up right now. Edwards Meats. You know, meat markets where you find bros at. Ha. Huh. Puns. Um... Edwards Meat Market is in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. And oh my god. They had the best stuff you could possibly buy. We're talking... If you want to get shiitake mushrooms, you want to buy venison, bison, alligator, you just want to get vegetables. They got tons of vegetables, tons of good stuff. You can visit their website at edwards-meats.com. Mmm. Mmm. Lord Jesus of fire. So, this pie company, about $15 for a pie. They have rhubarb, they got apple, they got all kinds of different stuff. It's frozen there. You throw it in your, uh, your oven for about an hour, $3.50. You're in the zone. You're in the freaking game. You know, there's a lot of sugar, a lot of calories, but you know what? I'm about to walk three miles to college today, so I'm pretty sure I can have a piece of pie. I was trying to find a home meat market that I could go to that had friendly people. And the first time I went in there, I asked one of the ladies, it was, hey, she was off to do something else. Just asked her something simple. Hey, where do I find this and that? Bam. Told me where it was. Went right there, got the stuff I needed. You can't really do that some places. A lot of places, I don't know, their staff really isn't that friendly or it's really pretentious. You know, on the door, they had, like, gun raffle. (laughs) You know? They know their target audience. You know, you want to go to a 
a PTA rally or, you know, go do your ex-California socialist thing, hey, go do it. But not there. They're about guns and meat. Maybe not about guns. They had a raffle going on. But hey, I'm about the kind of people that, you know, are not pretentious. They're inviting. You want to get some organic, biodegradable food? Hey, they got that too. I don't know how long Edwards Meats has been there. I'm fairly certain that there's an actual Edwards guy. So I read on their website what they say. Edwards Meats, three generations of customer service. In 1962, Herb Edwards desired to start a retail meat market in a colorful state of Colorado. And Arvada friends suggested a location adjoining to Abner's Market which is at the time an outdoor fruit and vegetable stand with a small grocery store in Wheat Ridge. When he made the commitment to begin his journey, Herb traveled on the weekends to pour concrete, build a cooler, and buy the necessary equipment needed to construct what began the infamous Edwards Meats. The Abner Edwards relationship proved to be beneficial for both parties. The two then decided to make an even bigger move. The businesses were growing by leaps and bounds, so the new location was a must. During a snowstorm on October 30th, 1966, Abner and Edwards Meats together moved from the north side of 44th to, to the south side, which is the present location, at 122 80th West 44th Avenue, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Herb's son, Ernie Edwards, worked side by side with, with his father to build a quality store to include products such as the USDA Prime and Choice, aged beef, poultry, fresh seafood, buffalo, elk, venison, and a large variety of sausages. (laughs) Speaking of a large variety of sausages at a meat market, in March of 1974, the father and son team built a smokehouse to accommodate the demand for the home smoked products and further increase services offered to their customers. This then allowed them to produce even more products to their inventory, including their own bacon ham, smoked turkey, fish, and sausage. In 1977, Ernie took over the business. Then, through the years, several of the Edwards family contributed their services. This included Ernie's son, daughter, brothers, sisters, an aunt, a cousin, several nieces, nephews, and now a couple of his granddaughters. Ernie was one to offer personalized service and quality meats as the business continued to increase its customer base. But as time passed, overseeing every facet of the business was quickly becoming hard to handle with a large volume of customers. Ernie turned to his son, Darren, who helped took over the business the day-to-day needs. Now Ernie's son, Darren, has been enthusiastically working the store since he was six years old. After attending college for a couple of years, he realized he knew more than they could teach him about operating a small retail business and wanted to keep the family store alive. In 2001, the father and son duo remodeled and expanded the store from 2,000 square feet to over 5,000. The expansion has the essential accommodating and growing customer base. Service counters were expanded. The huge freezers and new stainless steel smokehouse were installed as part of the transformation. New customers are discovering what long-timers have known for 45 years. In addition to the superior meats, the family now offers fresh produce, daily baked breads, gourmet foods, spices, seasonings, marinades, hardwood charcoal, variety of smoking chips. The staff of 14 gladly assists customers with cooking tips, recipe ideas, and instruction for making their own sausage and smoking meat. The latest craze available now is a Louisiana-based turducken. This is a turkey stuff with a duck stuffed with chicken. All the incredible stuffing, blah, blah, blah. You know, they are a one-stop shop. You know, if you're... I pretty much don't even go to... I wouldn't even think now to go to a Walmart or to the the produce store. I mean, to like a supermarket anymore. Like it doesn't even cross my mind. Like I'll just like outside of our houses and on the corners of streets here in Colorado, there's um, tons of of hometown um, vegetable markets and chili roasters. And, and Edwards itself has got literally everything that you possibly would need. And, and that poses the question as well. So, you know, this guy's son and like all the other people, 
instead of promoting a place like Wally World or something like that, these people probably do online you know, sales too, or even the, the meat markets in your area do that too. Change your habits of where you're spending your money. Because just like this guy, he went to college for a couple of years. It really didn't help him to keep going to college. He probably doesn't even have a degree, but he's making more than half the people his age. So it's a big economic gain for the rest of us. And for this awesome pie that I'm eating. This is a combined episode. I had a podcast called Mercenary Metal, which kind of showcased bands and talk about foreign policy stuff. I haven't really got any foreign policy stuff right now that I'm doing. I'm taking a class called Leading Lives That Matter. I think it's pretty interesting. C.S. Lewis talking about the Great War back in the day and kind of questioning your vocation in life. And it's kind of what it's stunning now with this class. And it's interesting. We should all question our vocations, and just like, uh, you know, the son of Mr. Edwards, question what you're doing. If you're going to college, I don't know, maybe take some time off. Start a food truck. Start a chili, uh, chili roasting venture. See what kind of money you can make. Do some pies. Hey, this company got 15 bucks out of me for a pie that maybe cost them 3 to $4 to make, maybe up to $10 or so, some different costs in between there. But you know what? They're making some good money. Question your vocation. And with that, now, a word from our sponsor. Set in the distant future, Earth is taking its last breath as the clean water supply has dwindled dangerously low. Humanity has become desperate. Governments have fallen. Military and religious factions have risen in place. Amidst this all, a woman's young son is stolen from her. In her quest to rescue him, she unwillingly becomes a key player in overthrowing the religious faction Keepers of the Faith, which is quickly rising to power and discovering a way to bring water back to Earth. Hello, podcast listeners. My name is Amanda. It has been gracious enough to give me a bit of time to tell you about a book I'm writing. I've entered a publishing contest hosted by Nerdist.com and Inkshares.com. The top five books with the most pre-orders will be published. The deadline is September 30th at noon Pacific Standard Time. The awesome thing is you're not charged for the book until it is published, and it's only 10 bucks a pop. Pretty good for a 350-page science fiction novel, personally. Um, If you are interested, you can search the title Where I Rest My Head at inkshares.com, or you can search by my name, Amanda Rye, like the bread. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope you enjoy my book. Thanks. Thanks.